How are we doing YouTube? Nick Pratap here from Next Gen Rehab and in today's video I'm going to be going over uh, exercise therapy and prescription for patients that are on ADT or androgen deprivation therapy. Uh, now again, uh, it's not meant to be any sort of medical advice. If you do have any um, questions in particular to um, some of the medications you're taking or what you should be able to do in terms of exercise, uh, definitely talk to your family doctor about that. I don't know your medical history. Um, this is just more so meant to be for educational purposes. Okay, so um, let's first talk about what ADT is. So ADT, androgen deprivation therapy, is therapy used uh, for prostate cancer patients uh, to help uh, reduce the spread of the growth of the cancer. And so um, what it does is it takes a male's testosterone level and knocks it down to zero. All right. Again, in attempts to prevent the cancer from growing and spreading to other parts of the body. Now, <clears throat> you can see some of the implications here. If you take that testosterone, drop it to zero, it's going to start to have effects on the uh, male body, right? So the big ones, fatigue, um, uh, loss of libido, uh, weight gain, um, strength loss or muscle mass loss. Uh, some patients will be feeling uh, symptoms of hot flashes, uh, potentially some hair loss in different areas of the body. Uh, another big one, depending on how long you're staying on this uh, therapy, is uh, the risk for uh, osteoporosis, right? So you can see a lot of different things are happening when uh, individuals are on uh, ADT therapy. And so, uh, you know, what can we do to help negate some of these side effects, right? Uh, the big ones we're concerned about, obviously, are things like weight gain, uh, strength loss, and uh, the potential um, for uh, fracture risk, right? So uh, we, uh, typically speaking, we see this in um, gentlemen that are usually uh, 65 years of age or older, so they're at that age where uh, they're already having a reduce in muscle mass, right, at a, at a faster rate. Um, they're at a higher risk of potentially developing heart disease, um, just being male in, in, in their later years. Um, and uh, depending on, on the body type and how long they've been on the therapy, they can be more predisposed to uh, osteoporosis. So we want to be combating these things and obviously when it comes to um, any sort of uh, you know risk of developing heart disease we want to focus on the diet so if you, if you have access definitely talk to nutritionists to make sure your diet is okay and to address any other risk factors you may have uh, for heart disease, diabetes, uh, higher cholesterol um, and then obviously the second component is going to be uh, using exercise okay so um, you know the main things we want to focus on with these patients is some sort of resistance training program. So um, focusing on a program two to three times a week that's going to target the major muscles of the body. There's a lot of great programs out there uh, where you don't need any equipment, right? You can do some body weight stuff. Um, if you have dumbbells at home, you can do a program with that. But we want to focus on uh, muscles um, or the major muscles of the body, right? So we're talking about things like the chest, the legs, the back, the shoulders, the core. Um, so working on, on building these areas up uh, and when it comes to the resistance training uh, we don't want to be focusing on too light a weight either right if you're able to do you know 20 30 reps in a row that might be a little bit too easy for you it's not going to be enough of a stimulus to to maintain that muscle mass right so when we do exercise prescription um, again uh, it, it can vary from person to person we want to be um, you know closer to that uh, 8 to 12 rep range uh, focusing on anywhere from 1 to 3 sets okay uh, depending on the person especially if you're a beginner right we don't want to start you too heavy because that can lead to injury and especially if you don't know the technique of the exercise so work with your trainer work with your exercise physiologist to build up good technique understand the exercise and then as you get used to doing it uh, the exercise um, then we can gradually start to increase the weight uh, that you're using uh, to have more uh, of a uh, uh, benefit when it comes to the strength and reducing muscle mass loss okay uh, the next thing we want to focus on obviously is the uh, cardio so we want to use cardio uh, to help uh, negate some of the side effects there's a lot of good research coming out about um, you know trying to maintain a moderate to vigorous intensity zone so you know going for a light walk that's fine um, but I always promote using the light walk as a warm-up for 10 minutes so a light walk meaning you can sing once the body's warmed up, we want to start moving into that moderate zone of exercise. So moderate meaning you can talk, but you can no longer sing. Um, you know, we have patients even move up into the vigorous zone for in, in what we call interval training. So they may do like a power walk for 30 seconds to a point where you can 
um, maybe you only say a couple words, and then you go into a recovery stage where you can, uh, for a minute, where you can uh, sing a song if you had to, and you go back and forth like that for 15 to 20 minutes. So <clears throat> the cardio, again, contrary to proper belief, you might be feeling tired, you might be feeling lethargic, but we found patients once they just get out, go for these walks, you know, whether it's a couple times a day, um, generally speaking, just getting a certain hormone circulating in the body, um, dilating the arteries, getting the heart pumping, um, just has a, a, a great effect holistically on the body. And, uh, and that, a lot of the times, does help to negate some of the side effects um, from the fatigue that patients might be feeling, okay? So uh, aerobic exercise absolutely is going to help, especially with uh, also things like controlling the, uh, your weight, right? If we start to see weight gain, especially in the abdominal area, that's where we generally see it with ADT patients, um, it's going to help with that. Uh, the other areas we like focusing on, obviously, are uh, our balance. So if you're someone at, at risk of, of osteoporosis, your bone density is lower, uh, we don't want you to, to uh, run the risk of, in, uh, of taking a fall, right? Uh, and so we really want to be working on balance, uh, especially the older we get after the age of 65. Uh, balance becomes very important. Uh, last thing we want is you to take a fall, uh, fracture a hip, and be out of commission for you know eight, eight plus months. So working on balance is going to help, uh, especially with uh, patients that are high risk of osteoporosis and having falls. Um, strength training is obviously also going to help with, um, with the uh, uh, osteoporosis, so just building strength in the muscles. Um, depending on the degree of uh, uh, bone density uh, loss that you've had or if you've had any sort of metastases in cancer, um, you know, definitely talk to your exercise trainer on, on exercises that are more appropriate for you so that you reduce your risk of injury. But another thing you might be able to introduce is uh, impact exercises, so marching on the spot, um, doing light hops. Uh, these things have been shown to uh, help with um, building a bone density as well, so things like skipping rope. However, um, it's all in the context of the patient, right? If you're someone that's at a high risk of, of fracture, if you've had metastases through the pelvis area or other areas of the body, um, or your bone density is lower uh, in you know areas like in the femur, uh, then you for sure want to be talking to an exercise professional before starting any exercise program, right? Just to make sure that those exercises are appropriate for you and that you don't run the risk of injury. The last area we like focusing on um, with ADT patients, obviously, is going to be flexibility, right? So as we get older, the body's going to get tighter, uh, and so we want to focus on stretching certain areas out, um, you know, just to provide that relief uh, of, of reduced uh, stiffness. Uh, it's great for helping with recovery after exercise, and it's just going to uh, reduce your chances of injury uh, long term. Okay, so <clears throat> that's kind of how we use exercise therapy. Um, in a nutshell to help patients with uh, ADT. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Uh, once again, my name is Nick Pratap from Next Gen Rehabilitation. We'll see you in the next video.